Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica and today I have my lovely sidekick Georgia with me as we learn about the rock cycle. And this is gonna be a fun little activity that we can do to learn about how different types of rocks are formed and the cycles that they go through and what starts those cycles. So for the project today, you need some crayons. You're gonna need sort of like a butter knife. You'll notice Georgia is scraping our crayons down. So use crayons you don't care about. A little piece of foil and some hot water. And then all of our patrons, you guys have our fabulous rock cycle printout. It has the rock cycle that will fill in together on how it forms the different types of rocks. And then here it has some different types of the rocks that we're gonna learn about. The igneous rock, sedimentary rock, and a metamorphic rock. And you could use this to make some observations about what you notice between the three types of rocks. So we are gonna learn how these rocks sort of create a cycle. And the first type of rock we're gonna start with is called igneous rock. Now this is rock that's really, really dense. It's really, really smooth. And that's because it's formed under very high pressure from molten rock that's like cooling down. All right, so that's sort of like our top rock. And that is represented by our full crayon. This is sort of all one thing. It's really solid, it's really dense, um, and it's kind of nice, right? It's like very smooth. And what we're gonna do is we are going to erode our rock. That's what Georgia's working on right now. She's playing the person, the act of the weather. So right now she is weathering our rock. Wind could do this, um, things hitting it could do that. People hiking could weather our rock and break it into smaller pieces. The rain can weather our rock. And what we get is we get a sediment. And that happens through a process called erosion. So igneous rock, when it erodes, we'll put erosion on here, it erodes into sediment. And that sediment, we will then compact. So to make your sediment, you'll take your butter knife and your crayon and you can just start to erode it into lots of little shavings. Can I do that one? Yeah. And then we will take our shavings and we will make sedimentary rock. So sediments that you might see really commonly, sand is a sediment, dirt's a sediment, clay is a sediment. All those things are sediments. They're like little really fine bits of stuff that then, um, that are from these like igneous rocks or other rocks can also, sedimentary rocks can erode so can the metamorphic rocks. All different types of rocks can erode. That's just the rock breaking down into smaller pieces. So you're just gonna shave your crayon. And when we get enough crayon shavings, we can make our sedimentary rock. Now, sometimes our sediment is not into really tiny pieces. Sometimes our sediment is just other chunks of rock. So we could also make larger chunks of this. Although I think just cutting it in half might be a little too big. But you could try to make little chunkier shavings as well. I need a plastic with this. Georgia's got a plan. Well, I think we're gonna combine ours. Chunk. And I like using different colors of crayons. You can really see sort of what's happening with our rocks. This is a fun project. You can work on some knife skills. I can do it like you. I can't even cut it. Can't even cut it. That's okay. I appreciate that you're being safe. All right. Let me go. Let's do this one a little. There we go. That one really crumbled. All right. That's because I started it. I know. You did great. So now. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna give Georgia a little bit of my chunky sediment. And now we both have a little bit of crayon shavings and sediment in here from our igneous rock. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna make a sedimentary rock. And that's happened when the sediment comes together and it either gets warmed up or it gets pressed together. So what we can do is George, you're gonna scrape it sort of into the middle of your foil. And then you're just gonna make kind of like a little bag around your rock. You wanna to try to make it so that the foil doesn't crinkle into your crayon area. And these will make little teeny tiny rocks for us. And that's okay. So I'm just sort of making a little hole right here. And then what 
what you're going to do is we are going to press on our sedimentary rock and we'll warm it up with our hands. All right, so you can press it and we'll warm it up just like this. And if you want to warm it up a little extra, you can just really quickly dip it in some hot water. And the hot water is what we're going to really use in the next part. And then when we open it up really gently and slowly, after we've pressed it together, oh, mine needs a little more heat and pressure. There we go. I couldn't get it out. Now Georgia wrapped her up maybe a little too tightly. I'm a little bit worried that it can't quite get out. We're going to warm mine up a little bit more. So heat and pressure is going to be what sort of makes that sediment, the sands or the little pieces of chalk or dust, it's going to bring it together into something called sedimentary rock. Now, sedimentary rock is really, really fragile. So if you come across sedimentary rock, it breaks really, really easily. And you can see that in our project, as you open it up, it might start breaking. But you can see that some of these pieces, they have the other little tiny flecks on it. So we have these small sedimentary rocks right here that have been pressed and warmed up together. We'll see how Georgia's came. And so on our table, we can write that sedimentary rock is made through heating and pressure. So heat and I'll put P for pressure goes from sediment to, to sedimentary rock. Now we could erode that rock with our um, rain and that type of thing. So erosion takes sedimentary rock and it goes back into sediment. All right, so erosion can happen at any time. Now, if we want to take our sedimentary rock and we want to make it more solid, we need to add a little bit more heat and more pressure. I'm going to bring in our hot water here, and we are going to whoops, melt our little sedimentary rock a little bit better. And you can do that by making like a little foil boat for your little piece of sedimentary rock. Now, this is going to change it into metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock is sort of this in-between rock between sedimentary rock and igneous rock. And so it's not going to fully melt. George's little boat floats. Beautiful. We're going to... Oh, you're sinking. Here we go. I'm going to take yours out for a sec. I'm going to put mine in. And we're going to let this heat up so that it melts our crayons. All right, so that heat, it needs more heat and more pressure to go from a sedimentary rock into a metamorphic rock. So, and then metamorphic rock will add even more heat and more pressure and we'll get back to the igneous rock. So we can go heat and pressure sort of makes this cycle go around. Erosion brings it back each time, which is pretty fun. And our melted rock when we get fully melted is going to be called magma. So let's see what we got here. Should be starting to, some of my pieces might have been a little too big to melt quickly. Maybe our water is not quite hot enough anymore. But I can add some more hot water in. I'll we'll add a little bit more hot water in here. So that we can melt that sedimentary rock. We gotta add a little bit of heat into it and make it. Oh, now I got some water in there. I've got a hole somewhere. I can see my crayon melting and sort of coming back because it looks like paint splatter on here. I'll just hold it in here as it gets nice and cozy and warm. Now I don't want to fully melt it because if I fully melt this, it's going to turn into magma and Magma, when it cools down, is going to become an igneous rock. So if I add too much heat right now, I'll go straight from the sedimentary rock back to igneous rock just through a ton of heat and a ton of pressure. So I want to kind of melt it a little bit more, but not fully. So I, want this, I want my crayon, my crayon that I get to become hood. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So now I have a little bit more heat a little bit more pressure, and you can see on mine that my rock is coming together a little bit better here, right? It's more, it's like larger pieces, it's got sort of a smoother outside to it, 
If I let it cool down before I'm opening it, it would be stronger than what it is now, than what the sedimentary, the sedimentary was really fragile. And then this is my metamorphic rock. All right, so you can see that it's sort of, you can see the different types of rock in there, but look at this outside, it's smoother, sort of more together than what it used to be for the sedimentary. It's a lot stronger, I can hold it now and it doesn't break so easily. And now what I can do is I can add more heat and more pressure. We'll add heat for a little bit longer. Oh, I'm gonna hold it up because I've got a little hole somewhere in my foil. In fact, maybe I'll change to Georgia's foil. We'll take a little piece of this. We'll use a piece of this foil right here. That's your foil. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to heat this up until it becomes magma. So I'm gonna let this completely melt. And I can fill in my rock cycle. So for sedimentary rock into metamorphic rock, we're gonna, again, we're gonna add heat and pressure. And of course, metamorphic rock, you could also scrape that away, right? Wind could come into metamorphic rock, rain could come down, people could be hiking. So we could erode and Oops, erosion. And that erosion would lead back to sedimentary rock. And so we sort of, sedimentary rock is sort of, everything can erode and, or not sedimentary, sediment. Everything can erode to the sediment and then a little pressure will make sedimentary rock. More heat and pressure will make metamorphic rock. And of course, you could erode from igneous rock into metamorphic rock. So this is erosion. Or actually that's cooling. Ah! And so here we have, we've got heating and pressure. Heating is gonna make our metamorphic rock, which is what we're doing now, into magma, right? And then pressure and cooling is gonna change that into igneous rock, right? And then heating is gonna change igneous rock also back into magma by heat. Magma, if I heat igneous rock or metamorphic rock or sedimentary rock, all is gonna go to magma if I heat it so much. And then I can erode all of these rocks. And this is how all of the rocks on earth are made. Now, a lot of the igneous rocks are made really close to the core of the earth, right? Those igneous rocks, they need the heat from the core of the earth. They heat and then they sort of get pushed up through the plate tectonics, which is where we see them. Sedimentary rocks are usually sort of on the surface and you can see it with these lines. There's these beautiful, colorful mountains in China that you could look up and they are actually rainbow, they're called the Rainbow Mountains and it's a whole bunch of different layers of the sedimentary rock that got pushed up, which is really cool. All right, so we're still heating up our stuff into magma, our metamorphic rock, and it is really starting to melt. You can kind of see it melting in here. So it takes a long time to heat that rock up. Magma is really, really, really hot. And depending on the way that you cool it, you might cool it into obsidian, which is a volcanic glass that's also a rock. Um, or you could cool it into an, another type of igneous rock, which is fun. So I'm really starting to see it melt here for us, which is really great. Georgia is doing a great job. She's making some more sediment for us to make more different types of rocks. And we have, you'll notice that, you know, once this all melts together, it's sort of all together. It's not chunks in there that we see in our igneous rock. All right, almost there. I'm gonna stir it up a little. We're really getting quite molten in here. We have effectively made the inside of a volcano with a little bit of boiling water. A volcanic rock. Yes, Georgia has some volcanic rock, which is really cool. In fact, in one of our projects, we are going to look at how to figure out rock type based on weight, and we'll measure it in two different ways, and we're going to use some of Georgia's rock collection for that, which will be fun. And we can determine if people, if the rocks that people say they are, are real or fake with that. And that was used a long time ago, even with gold. You could tell if a crown was made out of pure gold or not so much, which I think if you're paying for something, you want to know if it's real or fake. 
All right. This guy is almost all the way melted, this rock right here. And then we can cool it down back into an igneous rock. And that will just take a little bit of time. Now you could make some really fun rock crayons with this also by shaping them and cooling them in all different colors. You could take your crayons, turn it into sediment, make some sedimentary rock, warm it up into metamorphic rock and then really melt it down. You'll make new colors of igneous rock, which is really cool. And they'll be in all sorts of fun shapes. And you'll have something new and exciting to do a little bit of art with. All right, so now I have my lava, my magma, and I can press this in and you just gotta wait for it to cool and it will make a new igneous rock. So we can wait for that guy to cool and we've got all sorts of crayon shavings on here. It's a little bit of a mess, but it's a lot of fun, especially if you make your own art rocks that you can color with and do other fun things with. Um, as we open it, let's see if we're ready to open it up quite yet. I have a question. I don't know if it's quite ready. It's not cooled down quite enough. How did you, how did they know that it was real gold or not real? Ooh, that is something that we are going to learn about in a different project, in our real or fake projects. So you have to check out our YouTube channel and you can weigh it in air and weigh it in water. And you can use those two weights to find out if it's real gold or fake gold, which is pretty cool. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. As we looked at the rock cycle, we are going to learn all about rocks and rock formation all this week in this unit. And then we'll also do some gemology and learn about rocks versus minerals and how those become precious stones. All right. Have a great one. It was great to see you guys. Bye friends.